Compass Mining makes Bitcoin mining accessible to everyone. Start mining in as little as 48 hours with our turnkey hardware online and mining directly to your Bitcoin wallet within two business days. Find out more at compassmining.io and get started now. Hey miners, welcome or welcome back to the channel McNally Money, the new home of power mining analysis. An absolutely fantastic morning for the miners, really rallying on the strength of Bitcoin over the weekend. They're taking off in a big way and that's exactly what we're gonna dissect in today's presentation. Before we do though, take a second, smash the like button you guys, big help to myself and the channel. Feel free to subscribe. We just hit 46,000 members. We'd love to have you as part of the community. And finally, let me know how you're feeling about the mining space overall, where you currently rank in our Miner Madness competition, and of course, how your portfolio is looking during this morning's session. With that being said, let's get in to today's video. Okay guys, so that's right, Monday morning, I'm back in Canada from Palm Springs. The weather a little bit colder here, Anthony, but that's okay because it's heating up in the Bitcoin mining sector this morning. What an amazing start to the week we're having, not only for the price of Bitcoin, but for the miners themselves, absolutely taking off in a major way, which we're gonna come on to in a second here. Before we do though, again, we've seen some big moves in the price of Bitcoin over the weekend. We'll throw up a chart here, Anthony. We actually hit in the $65,000 range, 65,900 on Friday. Now we've come up all the way surpassing 69,000 at one point, sitting currently uh, $68,624. Absolutely incredible. We've been talking about the ETF inflows, this inertia that's been building, Obviously a big event on Friday with Trump going on the Joe Rogan podcast. So we'll talk about that as well. But these catalysts are starting to breathe life into Bitcoin. Exactly what we've been waiting for here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was good to see I was away this weekend. I had a couple of days break, um, but I kept my eye on the, on the Bitcoin price. And um, yeah, 67,000 yesterday, 69,000 achieved today. So a nice little little bump. It's pulled back a little bit, but... You know, maybe a little bit of profit taken at 69,000. But um, it's, I mean, you look at the range it's held over the last six months now, seven months, it's um, it's in that range now. And we just need a, a, a push up, really. It's achieved 69,000 a number of times now. We want it to get above the 73, which is the all time high. And then, you know, head towards 80, 90,000, as some of these, um, these uh, analysts have been saying. We certainly do. It's so exciting right now. I find it very hard to even sleep, Anthony, because there's so much excitement going on, so much news in this sector. On Twitter, I find myself just glued to that uh, platform right now. And speaking of the podcast with Joe Rogan, on the flight home from Pod Palm Springs, I was able to sneak in three hours of listening to that podcast. They didn't specifically talk about Bitcoin or crypto but they did talk about a number of issues. And again, we see Donald Trump continuing to pull ahead in the polls, at least from what we can see uh, here in Canada and the United, United Kingdom, Anthony. So a lot going on in the political realm, a lot going on in the financial realm. And the next slide we wanted to talk about are the ETF inflows. So from the financial side of things, an absolutely monstrous day on the 25th of October, I'll let you share the figure there, Anthony, but we continue to see this snowball grow. Yeah, another 400 million of um, Bitcoin purchased by the ETFs on Friday. So, you know, I saw, I think I saw an article with BlackRock now, they're getting so close now to 400,000 Bitcoin um, held in the ETF there. And this is only since the sort of like towards the end of January when, when, when they were approved. So it's a, you know, in a short space of time, nine months, nearly 10 months, and we're seeing this level of um, Bitcoin buying. And we're just, we're at the start, really. You know, this this will carry on. We're noticing now, even um, in the space now, there's a, there's a pickup in the space of people moving into the space. The Bitcoin price is helping. It's sort of, this last couple of months, we've seen it go 54, 62. Now it's 69. It's starting to get a little bit of momentum and that's that's attracting people that may have been in the space before but want to come back and maybe have a second bite um but the likes of me and you and a number of other people never left the space we were here all the way through that that bear cycle so we're, we're holding the 
holding the line really well. And um, yeah, the ETFs, I mean, just, it's just ongoing. Um, I mean, we, we always looked at uh, MicroStrategy as the leading, um, obviously, public company with Bitcoin. They've got around about 250,000, but but BlackRock's a, you know, it's a monster. It's, you know, uh, we talk about presidents and kings and queens around the world like that. But, you know, these investment companies pretty much pull a lot of strings um, in terms of decision making around the world. If they want to see something done, they certainly have the power and the and the financial backing to to get that there. And um, yeah, this is this is this is big. Bear in mind. CEO of BlackRock five years ago was anti Bitcoin, so you know, think of it in that um, in that context, and look where we are today. So, you know, I'm just waiting for the next big company. Is it going to be a Microsoft? Is it going to be an Apple? We've we've been saying that for three or four years. We need one of those big companies to come in and say we want to put on the balance sheet and micro Microsoft are having a vote shortly to determine that. So. Yeah, it's it's a positive space at the moment. Um, I only see upside from here, you know, in, in in the next few months, certainly. I do as well. We already know Tesla has Bitcoin on balance sheet. They didn't sell a single Bitcoin. You're right in saying Microsoft is now exploring opportunities. BlackRock, the only concern there, Anthony, it does raise some questions for me about the decentralized uh, notion or idea behind Bitcoin when one single company or entity owns that many coins. But again, it shows the demand here. These are phenomenal numbers. $400 million in a single day going into Bitcoin are numbers people just would not have even fathomed uh, 12 months, 18 months ago. So with that being said, the next chart here is hash rate. So this one has obviously a direct impact on minor margins and profitability. Although we've seen a nice bump in the price of Bitcoin, hash price is still significantly depressed uh, from pre-having rate. So why don't you walk us through what we're seeing on this chart, Anthony, and what this means for miners. I know they were at break even or very close to it just a month or two ago, but starting to see a little bit of help here. Yeah, I mean, you know, hash price is a, is a reflection of Bitcoin price, um, and you know, we the, the the reason we've seen these spikes is is not to do with the Bitcoin price itself, but the actual transaction fees were spiking on a number of occasions. But it's not sustained spiking, so you know, two, three, four days, um, and then it, it it goes back to where it was, and, and and transaction fees represent a very small percentage of of the actual block rewards. So, you know, miners aren't at the moment, shouldn't be reliant on transaction fees, but any spike in transaction fees is great. But the, we saw the, the hash price itself drop as low as $35 a, um, a, a pet ash per day. And now we're seeing it probably about 45 towards $50 a pet ash per day. So, you know, as the price, as Bitcoin price rises, that that rate also rises. So, you know, it's positive. We've seen these a lot of these miners. They've gone out and bought the latest machines, so that will help them as well. When the Bitcoin price isn't where it needs to be, you've got to make sure energy and efficiency are your two levers that you can really help to achieve a lower cost of mining Bitcoin. And um, we'll come on to Iron in a second, but they went out and bought literally a whole stack of um, S21 Pros and and their fleet efficiency is at sixteen at the moment. That's significantly lower than every other miner in North America. What that means is it means that they're using less electricity to mine Bitcoin per Bitcoin than every other miner, which means keeps the cost down. You've got to pay for electricity. They've also got a very good rate at the moment because they're using the market rate in Texas. And as we've seen these last few months, that's been hovering around the three cent a kilowatt hour. Even some of the miners with PPAs aren't getting that attractive rate at the moment. So um, it's been a it's been a good it's been a good couple of months for for Iron to come back and and like we see we'll come on to share prices. Theirs is doing really well today. But yeah, hash price will steadily increase as the Bitcoin price increases. But bear in mind, if you go back eighteen months ago. Um, you know, hash hash price was significantly higher. There was like, you know, there was, you know, two, three hundred dollars per pet hash per day. So um miners are having to sort of like really look at how they can um how they can keep costs down um and look for that stranded energy, look for that re, re, you know, renewable energy that they can get at maybe a discount to keep the the balance of the of the load there. So um yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll hopefully as as the Bitcoin price increase month by month, they'll, they'll, we'll see the reflection in in um, in in hash in hash price as well. And bear in mind, this graph here is a is a month uh, um, uh, uh, graph, so it's you know it's not showing the the, the uh, to the 
to the degrees of the daily rate at the moment. So, um, but yeah, um, I think the chart says forty five point eight nine dollars uh, per petash per day. So, about twenty twenty percent higher than it's been from its lows, but we still want it to see go higher um, to give it a little bit more uh, margin for the miners. Yeah, we certainly do. And it's an interesting point you bring up, Anthony, about the miners really having to watch costs because of this depressed hash price over the last few months. That's why I love investing in cyclical companies like this coming out of a bear cycle. These are lean, mean operating companies uh, before they've had a chance really to enjoy the the bull market uh, euphoria and price action of Bitcoin. So speaking of which, you mentioned the word spiking. The thumbnail today said Bitcoin miners are taking off. I didn't use a rocket emoji, but I'm getting pretty close, Anthony, because we are seeing major moves in the price action today. You mentioned Iron up over 14%. We've got HUD8, BitDeer, both up double digits. And our good friends at DMG Blockchain in the top four today. Great showing for this small Canadian miner. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, it's a great reflection. The Bitcoin price is up and we know that the volatility of miners is, is even more volatile than the Bitcoin price. So um, pleasantly to see these size of increases. I mean, you know, the likes of Iron and Hut, um, you know, significantly higher today. Um, good reflection. Looking at the volumes as well, um, if you look at uh, Iron's volumes um, for, for three months, it's at 14 million. That's an average daily um volume if you look at the today's volume it's over 12 and a half million this is literally a couple of hours after market opening so a, a lot of buying in that in that in that space of time there a lot of a lot of volume shares um already probably up on what they're by the time we're talking now is that 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 volume is probably higher than their three month average so really big there and even again look at bit farms's volume look at wolf's volume there 18 19 million shares clean spark 19 million shares um, you know, Riot, you know, uh, one of the biggest miners, um, only only core scientific and uh, marathon digital are bigger than Riot at the moment in terms of market capitalization, only 9 million shares. Uh, marathon, the biggest miner and, and generally has the biggest um, uh, uh, volume of shares. If you look at their three month, it's 35 million. They're already at 26 million. So massive uptick in, 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 in trading this morning in the first, you know, the first few hours. Yes, people can pre-trade, but the volumes are never that high in pre-trading. You know, normally in the te- in the tens or maybe a hundred thousand shares. But as soon as the market's open, then everyone gets the opportunity to go in there and purchase or sell shares. And looking at today's green, we've seen a lot of buying of shares today. So really positive news. Good to see Aaron at the top, how far it can go. Um, you know, um, who can tell it's still way down on its um on its uh, year high of fifteen dollars fifty, so you know at the moment, uh, you know ten about ten dollars fifty, ten dollars fifty five. So it's still got another five dollars to get to its year high, and that was uh, that happened in I think it was in June while we were away um, on our trip to uh, Dallas. So um, yeah, so a lot of these miners nowhere near their, their year highs yet. So we've still got a way to go, but we pleasantly uh, like what we see today, and hopefully it will continue. Compass Mining is your trusted partner in Bitcoin mining. Whether you're investing in one machine or thousands, our customizable solutions are tailored to meet your needs. We are your experts in Bitcoin mining, offering a platform where individuals and businesses can purchase hardware, host machines, and access a range of ancillary Bitcoin mining services. We also specialize in large-scale site development and data center operations. Discover more at compassmining.io and see how we can power your success today. Yeah, we certainly do. And this is obviously leading to some big moves in the minor madness uh, Q4 trading competition as well. (laughs) So we'll throw up a leaderboard from Friday's close. I'm still in first, Anthony, but I expect some major changes. Luckily, I have iron in my portfolio in this trading competition. But with this type of percentage change, we're obviously seeing some big moves, not only on the analyst leaderboard, but on our regular competition leaderboard as well. No, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean you're holding the you're holding the line on on the on the leaderboard there. But if you, if we look at the live leaderboard now, um, and we've had a change in in leader since Friday, um, the leader now is uh, Aaron, and you know forty three percent gain um, in terms of where he has in his three choices: Wolf, Cipher, Iron. Well, we know that all those three shares are doing extremely well, um, and you know he, he's 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 
making a real uh, surge at the top there. But it is close. There's, there's you know, um, we had uh, Dan, who was the leader most of last week. He's currently in fourth place there. In terms of the analyst live table, um, at the moment, you're still holding there. You're in a good position there in 34th place. You've got A Trade, who's itching to catch you up there. He's in oh. 95. I'm managing to hold third place there, but it's very, very close after that. So, you know, even at um, uh, your gain for, for, the, for the first sort of 28 days of the month is, you know, nearly 33%. A Trade at 28. I'm at 26.71. So if you look at the mining companies and how they've performed since the 1st of October, I can tell you now that Wolf, is up forty eight point five percent since the first of first of October, followed by Cipher at forty four, um, followed by Rice at thirty five point four, Saluna at thirty two point three, Clean Spark at twenty seven, Irons got a nice uptick today, so that's close to twenty four percent up, and Hut at twenty one, followed by Hive at twenty, nearly twenty one themselves. So some big big moves this month, and and to be honest with you, um, I think. I can I can categorically say that the league table. I think every member who's every member of the competition is in positive territory. So again, um, you know, all those entries, everyone's positive, but the but, but at the top, it's hotting up there. Forty three percent gain in twenty eight days. Um, you know, maybe we bring them on the channel and get them to give them some more insight to the future. But it's uh, it's proven to be a great success at the moment. Certainly has. I was going to say they might be getting a job at BlackRock after this competition's done. That's incredible returns. And the fact that every single person is in the green during this competition, I think just speaks to the community here. We're in the right spot. We were able to beat BlackRock to the space by about five years. And now we get to uh, enjoy the fruits of our labor here. So, so shifting gears now, some news in the mining sector. Again, no shortage of press releases coming out this morning. We had one from Griffin, fairly major update for this smaller miner. We talked about some personnel changes in the C-suite last week. Now they've done a significant debt to equity conversion uh, to strengthen their balance sheet, Anthony. So I'll let you walk through what this means uh, and exactly what we can expect from Griffin here. Yeah, so um, Anchorage Digital is now effectively uh, going to be uh, the largest shareholder, and um, they're going to have a member on the on the Griffin board itself. So Griffin are restructuring uh, the debt, which is approximately eighteen million, um, and doing this by issuing shares, and this will reduce about seventy percent of the outstanding debt. So they're going to convert thirteen million debt into equity into equity and pre-funded warrants at about $1.10 a share, um, which is a, a premium to what the current price is there. And they'll restructure the remaining $5 million of the debt um, effectively you know, as a, as a three-year uh, loan at 4.25% interest, so quite a low interest rate. If you think of what some of the other miners are paying at the moment, that's quite close to the likes of what Core Scientific and Marathon have achieved on some of their um, convertible notes. So um a, a good interest rate payable in US dollars over the next three years. So Bitcoin price rises, that's a that'll be a benefit to them. But it's restructuring that debt there. That gives them opportunity to do things. And yeah, we we you know we've we'll reach out, well we have reached out to uh to Steve Gutterman, the CEO, and hopefully um get him on the on the podcast soon because you know we we, we want to see Steve. We've had Rob Chang on a two or three times this year already as the previous CEO. Steve took over a few months ago. And so I've reached out to him today to say, you know, come on the channel and uh, give us a an update of what this means in terms of the company and moving forward in terms of your strategy as to where you see Griffin going in the next sort of six to 18 months. And uh, hopefully we'll get uh, a response and get him on the channel this week. Yeah, it would be great to speak with him personally. And it is nice to see some action being taken on the debt front. I know we've addressed that on the channel previously. So great update there. The next one comes from Compass Mining. So they're actually the sponsor of our podcast, Anthony. You'll see their advertisements throughout today's episode. They've partnered up with Cathedra to co-locate 10 megawatts of Bitcoin miners. So very interesting move here from Compass, actually partnering with another member of this community. Yeah, I mean it's you know it, you know using Cathedra to you know to host these miners, uh, ten megawatts is you know quite a sizable amount there, and they'll just and they'll share the profit. So um, you know it's it's a good move. It's you know it gives uh, Compass flexibility. You know if, if they've got an uptick in um, in customers, they have 
you know, um, facilities now that they can put some of these miners to. We know that from Cathedra's perspective, they really gone into the market recently and looked at the hosting side. So, you know, they're starting to be a big player in the hosting business. I think they've got something like 60 megawatts themselves, of which 30 is already online. 30 megawatts coming online by the end of October, if I remember rightly. So, um, again, you know, that gets them, you know, um, a lot of their megawatts uh, used. And, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's great for both companies and uh, great for the customers as well. So, um, you know, having, having um, you know, established um, host miners out there to – to have your retail investors put their miners in and start earning them some good um, good returns. Especially with the price of Bitcoin moving as it is right now. The final piece of housekeeping, we've got a new appointment in terms of the U.S. General Counsel out from BitFarms. Interesting here, as this member is a co-founder of Firm 21, which was a law firm dedicated to primarily supporting Bitcoin miners. So definitely some history here for Rachel Silverstein. Any thoughts on this move at Bitfarms, Anthony? It's just the strengthening the um, strengthening the, the the management team there, and um, yeah, it'd be a great addition to the team. We'll, we'll we'll get Ben on soon, and he'll explain more with earnings coming out. So Ben Ben will probably come on the podcast and give us more of an update about you know the team itself and um, where they see themselves, especially over this next sort of six months. Now we want them to get that uh, that hash rate target they've been promising there to twelve. So. We'll wait with them for the re- for the October update to come out. They've got a challenging target of 21 by the end of the year, but Ben says 21 is doable and 21 will be energized. So, um, yeah, but a good good appointment today. Yeah, I definitely agree, Anthony. A great appointment out from BitFarms. And the final piece we have here is an update from CleanSpark over the weekend. I'll let you run through that one before we wrap up as well. Yeah, so Clean Spark have issued um, an 8K today, and on the 25th of October, they held a special meeting of stockholders um, at which the company stockholders approved an amendment to the to the um, articles of incorporation. Basically, what they've done is they've um, increased the authorized shares from 300 million to 600 million. Now, initially, a lot of the shareholders, retail shareholders, thought this was um, an actual dilution to 600 million. What this does is it gives uh, CleanSpark the flexibility in the future should they need to move very, very quickly um, in terms of acquisitions or in terms of purchasing mining machines at at a great deal. Because for every time we talk about these miners uh, doing really well, some of the big name miners. There's other miners that aren't doing so great, and um, you know we've seen a few this year that um, um, you know approached you know close to chapter eleven or have had to be bought, and so you know they're from, from clean parts perspective, this for them provides opportunities. But to have those opportunities, you've got to be able to move with capital really quickly. Now you know yes. Um, it gives them an, an option in the future to uh, file again for uh, an, an at-the-market offering. So it does give the opportunity, but you know those at-the-market offerings can be filed, and um, again, they generally get approved by by shareholders. So shareholders will know when CleanSpark are generally going to be using or or selling some of these shares. It doesn't mean that now they can go and sell between 300 million, 600 million shares without any shareholder knowing. They'll have to issue ATM offerings to relate to that increase now or part of that increase. And if you look at the way that some of these miners are doing, they might put out 500 million, 800 million in terms of marathon digital. I think they put a one and a half billion ATM out there. So um, as we move into you know this into the, into the new year and 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 see the the growth strategies for 2025, it might be that um, Clean Spark have got their eyes on sites or they've got their eyes on on mining companies that may have distressed assets, and um, or they might want to purchase a significant amount of miners through a supplier. Uh, at a really good deal, and this is giving them the flexibility now to to meet that requirement as and when. So um, yeah, I mean from a from a clean spot shells, it's it's a, it's actually a good um, it's actually a good thing, um, you know, and 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 it's not necessarily we're going to dilute to six hundred million um, without without a plan. I mean, you know, I, I, we've seen clean spot last couple of years. They've used the ATMs really well. Who's to say they're not going to carry on using them? Um, through the next, you know, through the next cycle, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I get more and more impressed when I listen to Zach. Um, he's certainly 
um you know got the sort of like the 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 the, the head and the brains behind clean spark and um he's he's the one that's um uh, I I I take a, a keen eye to, to to see what he's going to be issuing next. But he's he's talked through the through the through the strategy, and um, this is just helping him meet that strategy. So uh, yeah, very positive as a shareholder. Agreed. Yeah, not necessarily dilutive in nature, but definitely paves the path for that in the future. When we talked to Zach in Amsterdam, he did allude to going so-called shopping, I guess, next year, maybe for some distressed assets. So this is a great step in that direction and a good update out from CleanSpark. So across the board today, you guys, green in the market. Hopefully your portfolio is doing well. Feel free to smash the like button if you're making some money today. Let us know in the comment section below how you fare in Miner Madness. Your top pick right now for the rest of the year in terms of the Bitcoin mining space and of course, your sentiment towards Bitcoin price in the final few months of the year here as well. That's all for now. Thanks so much for watching. and We'll see you back here tomorrow.